now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi there, guys. It's me again. I think we can uh, give it a start, okay? I hope I've not uh, made you guys wait too long. I know I've cancelled a few. Um, I've cancelled uh, last week's one uh, as well, so uh, for the Effect Geometry webinar. But uh, this time around, it's, uh, it's a webinar. I'm uh, uh, proud to, uh, to uh, conduct it, sponsored by FP Markets of Australia. It's a... It's a uh, Essex uh, regulated and licensed uh, broker in Australia. They've just recently been based here in Cyprus. So I've had the privilege to be with them, represent them uh, in Malaysia recently, and I'll be going to Africa as well um, and other markets uh, with them, uh, sponsored by them to conduct the seminar. So uh, this time around, I would like to welcome you guys, but firstly and foremost, I'd like to say thank you uh, to you guys uh, for attending my webinar today. And this is the market outlook uh, that happens every uh, I think it's every Tuesday, every Mondays, um, every Tuesday, sorry, uh, for FP Markets, and uh, I'll be um, announcing the other webinars time and dates as well. Okay, so uh, we have got a couple of things to discuss. We'll just run through a couple of things uh, that would impact the markets. Uh, but I've just uh, done this very quickly here, like a bird's eye view on what we need to look out for in terms of catalyst or drivers in the market. OK, and these are drivers in the market on the fundamental aspects of things. So I just thought I do it as a summary. So we've got central banks view, China's view, uh, view on China, market overview and various others. And uh, we just go through that. The uh, reason why I would like just the topics there mentioned is because we would like to go back to top movers table as well later on, um, just so that we get an idea of what moves the market and what are the focus on which currency pairs for the whole week as well as the economic calendar so that we get to filter out uh, pairs or instruments that would be worthwhile for us to focus on. So once we, we streamline all these pairs, it will be easier for us to pick the right pair for the week or for the day to actually trade. Okay, that would be uh, the best way forward in order to um, pick the right, not only pick the right pair, but not to be um, picking the pairs that the liquidity are, are really low, um, you know, the flow of cash are really low, and that will then make you wait much longer, maybe on a sideway trend. Uh, so we would like to participate in movements of the markets um, by big investors, traders, uh, movers of the market. So when we ride along that, then we would probably get a better chance um, to, to ride along a volatile uh, or, you know, a market that or an instrument that gives you good opportunities. So here, for example, uh, just to share with you, I've just done this on paint, uh, just uh, on the paint program about five minutes ago. And basically, uh, I've got this from the, the summary of all these. I've got this from actionforex.com. Hence the reason I sort of like Action Forex in the way they actually, you know, sort of uh, pay focus on which type of news or which type of uh, uh, catalyst, we call it drivers of the market, you know, articles that could actually be uh, something that we can pay attention to before we look into the charts for the trend or draw your setup or patterns or anything like that. So before that, just an idea, we have got categories. We've got a central bank's view. Uh, as you know, for the whole week, uh, there may be, you know, um, focus on RBA, Royal Bank of Australia. Hence, we see lots of Australian dollar as well as New Zealand dollar moves, as well as China moves, because they are all uh, correlated. So when you look into China figures, um, economic figures coming out, then you know that they've got correlation with the Australian dollar as well, because these are very, very big trading partners. And how the Australian dollar or the economy of the of Australia moves would then impact um, New Zealand as well. So these are all, uh, you know, we need to connect the dots sometimes of which pair could be connected or correlated to which other pairs or which economy and uh, likewise. OK, so here we have got RBA. So you know that the mentioned uh, under the central banks, we have got uh, FOMC on the US side and then you've got the Australian side and then the ECB as well, which covers the European um, uh, countries or the euro in other words so you know that on central banks view or what would actually be coming out from central banks in, uh, in terms of its rates decision or or anything like that would actually be impacting the australian dollar the us dollar as well as the euro okay so here this is how we sort of um, dissect and digest information so that we don't have 
too much things in our mind and uh, this is how we dissect these information and the other thing as well is you know uh, China because they, they are unstoppable in terms of how they are moving in terms of you know being just in par shoulder to shoulder actually with the US economy so even though they're number two maybe but you know you never know when they'll overtake or they, they're probably you know in size wise uh, just in par with the states in, in other words so whatever that comes up from China uh, could actually impact various other markets as well. Uh, so we want to look into Australian dollars. Well, as, as you can see, you've got China watch here for the week and then you've got RBA there. So, you know, that, that's where the volatility could actually add up more onto um, Australian dollar as well as New Zealand dollar. Okay, so when you pair up something like um, AUD and USD, then you've got correlated pairs with the AUD USD. So that's the way you could uh, further diversify your portfolio as well. That means to choose uh, many more other pairs uh, together with that. Um, where on Action Forex, Charles? Uh, what I've done is on Action Forex. Uh, you know, when you go onto that. Um, I've just I've, I've just cut and paste really on that. But if you go to Action uh, Insight, if you go to the left, you've got Central Bank Views right there. You've got China's Watch. You've got Market Overview. You've got Weekly Report, Oil and Gold, as well as Special Topics. Uh, usually, I don't read them all, but I try to read. Uh, I try to look into the topics that are being focused and then I focus on the whole week but then I tie that up with top movers as well as economic calendar you know just to look at all the fundamentals economic data releases that could tie up with all the subjects that are focused on so that we we can then go onto the path of not um, you know not going astray to the other topics or other instruments um, and sometimes traders you know they tend to get quite confused as well uh, with uh, with what to trade in a day so that's probably just to give you an idea of what we can focus on uh, for the day so uh, that's where I got it from uh, Charles uh, it's on the uh, on action forex on the insights market insight section and you can take your time in reading them and it's always best to read them in a weekend as well for the week ahead uh, as opposed to reading them in because there's just a lot to read and uh, they, they usually come up with very very complete reports as well so I, I like that for for that but what I would like to do um, uh, most of is to make them uh, I mean like information that's bite-sized information micro learning we call it so that they are applicable onto your trading that's the most important thing to, to pick the right pairs that's the that, that's very very crucial in uh, one's uh, uh, what do you call that trading sort of uh, method you know so here we have got as I've mentioned China watch uh, with FOMC ECB and all that that's covered and now we are looking at China watch as well as you can see they've got PMI and then um, their monetary policy and all that what this gives us is we we need not go into it really deep into all the policies of China. All we need to know is that these are events that would actually be impacting Australian dollar as well as New Zealand dollar as well because you've got um, you've got that on on there. If if for example that whole week or that month is quiet on China's uh, data or news or events, you'll you'll most probably see is quiet as well in the Australia side of it. So this is how it's so correlated their economies in these countries as well. And uh, if you see that you've got um, whether it's economic data or any sort of uh, very big events happening economically in uh, Australia or, or China, then you automatically would see that play in the New Zealand side of it as well. So you see that there's, there's this correlation. So that would then pose us opportunity to actually trade um, Australian dollar, New Zealand, and then find correlated pay and then go into the charts, look into um, patterns as well. So this is what we're going to be doing uh, in a bit. So then you've got market overview. In the market overview section, still they've got the emphasis on Australian dollar as well, as you can see here. Australian dollar steady of the RBA stands, PAP, UK PMI manufacturing. So you see that, that there's a mention of Australian dollar there. You've got China there. And then at the very top later on, you've got a lot of Australian dollar mentioned as well. Uh, so then you know that all these um, reports are actually produced by, you know, a group of analysts and researchers and it's quite a big team and they're globally placed, globally located as well. So they wouldn't be spending their time writing, uh, you know, many reports that focuses on Australia if, for example, the market is not focusing on, on Australia or there's nothing going on in Australia or New Zealand or China, you know. So this is how we want to dissect the information just to get a bit of an idea of topics 
that would give you a hint of which pair uh, could actually be good for you to pick for that day. Okay, let me just check my questions. All right, Charles, no problem. Um, okay, so then you've got market overview right there. As you can see, dollar dollar staying range bound, um, and you can see that that's that's that arrow there. All these hints from images as well as topic are really very important for you uh, for your micro learning process. That actually means that not too much information, but little, little bits and pieces uh, that you can actually use then to go onto the charts and then um, analyze the trend further. So you see that whether or not it's still on a sideway, whether it has broken out or not, it's for you and your eyes only to actually decide that um, by yourselves uh, when you go onto the charts. Then here it says forex market steady as heavyweight data. See, you've got heavyweight data. So you see they, they mention a lot about US, about Australian dollar. Um, then you've got dollar again, the yield. So various others, and then at the very top earlier on, you've got the uh, Australian dollar ECB, as I've mentioned. So it's a uh, euro here, USD, and Australian dollar again, um, and that's driven by China's data. And then you've got a market overview is still focusing on Australian dollar as well as the US dollar there as well. So here, these are pairs that you want to write down or currencies you want to write down and then we want to do further correlation. And then uh, here we, we must not forget, of course, commodities, especially uh, both gold and black gold, and that's oil and gold. And here you've got, it says here, traders mixed over oils outlook, you know, crude oil. I mean, they could say almost anything, um, but it's, it's, it's us uh, that would actually pick them as hot topics firstly, but then when it comes to the trend and, and final trade setup, it is all down to us to look onto the charts. Hence the reason we're going to start into a foundation first before we go on to it technically. The technical part may take a little bit more time than these ones here, or sometimes it depends. Some of you guys would like to read a little bit deeper and things like that. Um, but it's always good to have a balanced sort of approach in terms of your time management when you want to do both technical and fundamental readings, you know, okay? So here you've got weekly report as well, and I like uh, to look into what they focus on um, on a weekly basis, and because their reports are really long as well, you know, they wouldn't be, um, you know, paid cheaply or not spend so much time in researching quality information if, you know, if you look at their reports as well, really long, really concise, uh, really long, sorry, really in detail, and uh, they've got many elements of uh, areas that they dig deep into. So I like that. And you could see that the topics as well focus all the way uh, to the dollar, and then you've got yen there as well. Okay, so uh, yen and franc ended as the weakest one. So that's that's uh, Swiss franc, I would, I would think, and then the Japanese yen. Okay, so here you go. You've got all that there. Now let's just uh, move on a little bit to the uh, action forex. You know, I like looking at the table for the top movers. Just a bit of an idea. Uh, let's look at whether there's a bit of a tie-in in terms of what we have seen earlier on. Now with the, um, let's, you could always go on the four hour and then daily. Uh, you go into the four hour, for example, um, one one nice tip that I can actually give you is to look at these dots here. If these dots are all dotted all across from four hour right up to monthly, it's better. What that means is that you've got that that ranking of Euro USD covering um, most of the time frame. So that actually gives you a bit of a steady type trend. So uh, that trend could possibly be on the downside because of the negative change uh, symbol right there. So we're looking at Euro USD. I think I've also um, hinted on Telegram group about Euro USD's, uh, what do you call that, um, downfall expected, more falling um, mainly because of its risk. And they, they have two types of shocks. I think I've also sent an excerpt by the bank uh, as well on the Telegram group. So do check on that. Um, and what the most of the banks and now even more Experts from the banks are really gearing towards selling the euro USD, and they've got lots of justifications as well about how bearish the euro would actually be uh, compared to the USD due to a lot of fundamentals as well as geopolitical as well as economical uh, shocks that are expected in euro uh, in the eurozone uh, from time to come. So uh, hence the reason we're looking into the news. You got um, you know you got Italy, you got France, you got Greece now uh, bailout and all other talks are coming, um, but there are a lot of underlying factors that would uh, pose more risk or fear uh, in the Eurozone section. So uh, this is what we want to look at, whether or not we have got loads of bearish 
ABCD patterns for the Euro USD, and hence the reason we want to pick the right pairs first that has got a marathon in terms of its trend, then we can actually pick uh, or spot uh, baby patterns that is made up of a big enough pattern that points to the floor, which is bearish for the Euro, for example. Okay, so here that's one row right there. Let me just close that in. And we've got another one which is NZD USD as well. That's also on the sell. Now, if we look into the daily chart, just looking into um, the um, the currencies that are mentioned the most, you will notice that you've got GBP, 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 GBP again, GBP again. So um, it's close to about six to seven out of ten that are focusing on GBP. But then GBP, as you can see here, most most of them are on the on the sell side of it. GBP there versus the dollar. GBP cat another negative there. Most of it, I think, all of it. The GBP are on the negative side, but whether or not it is still uh, on a sell, a best to sell now and all that, it's down to us to actually look into the charts. Uh, but then we know that GBP is quite focused uh, right there. So what we would want to do next is for the for the week, let's say starting um, today onwards to plan our trades from tomorrow uh, right up to Friday to look into whether or not we could find um, the volatility chart to point out which which uh, other currencies that GBP is most volatile against. Okay, uh, also it's best to go onto your economic calendar as well and look through that uh, there and see whether or not you have got um, you know hints of any more uh, GBP sort of news or GBP um, GBP type economic calendar speeches that may actually then hint us. Uh, to a uh, volatile sort of market uh, coming up uh, this week, the, the next couple of days. So here, for example, from tomorrow onwards, which is uh, Wednesday, uh, May 2nd, um, and here itself, you could see that you have got loads of NZD type um, high impact news on employment and unemployment. You've also got Euro GDP right there, figures, and you've got something on CAD, but CAD it's more a uh, speech that would uh, usually speeches. They would actually then pave the way uh, for for the other economic data that would be connected to to uh, the Canada's data. So the speech is usually a sort of a warm up. Uh, then you want to look at which other uh, which which day of the week or maybe next week that would then be very heavy on CAD. But this could be an indicator for you. So what? Uh, Paulus says, the governor says um, on, on this speech would actually pave the way maybe from next week's onwards, whether or not, if you see next week has got loads of Canadian, then you know that whatever he says this week would then pave out that way um, for further rise or fall. On, but that's basically down to us to to measure on different time frames the trend. Okay, so I hope that, gets, that gives you an idea right there. Um, let's just look through. We have also got, as you can see, a lot of medium impact news uh, still revolving the Australian dollar. Then you have got USD right there. You've got some more euro. Uh, and this itself sort of matches with what we see on the action forex in terms of the whole week. Um, that's why it's important for us to look into the, all these dots here. So all these dots here, you know, if it's marked all throughout like NZD, USD, then you know that that, that whole trend may actually prolong longer, you know, maybe for the whole week, maybe a little bit above the week because you're looking at different time frames. So you've got that on the four hour daily, weekly and monthly. So that actually gives you a sort of a long term type view for the NZD USD, but here we are just picking out, uh, you know, that one currency first, okay, not the pair, but the currency first, because the currency will then uh, give you a match on the volatility. So uh, as we know, we've seen all the GBPs right there on a daily chart. So GBP is giving you that heavy sort of focused by most of the traders out there or investors. So then we go on to the volatility chart and find out um, GBP is actually most volatile against which other currency. So if I pick GBP here, I want to be picking four hour plus the daily so that I can, you know, view it from two time frames at least. So the GBP, as you can see, um, it's looked at from the daily perspective to be quite volatile against the USD. Okay, so we have seen that the GBP is mainly on the, was it on the buy or on the sell? Let's just go back there. Okay, 
as uh, we have seen it's on the sell if I'm not mistaken I mean majority hence the reason I'm never paying attention so much on whether or not it's a sell or a buy on any website whether it's downtrend or upside um, I just want to look at how busy will that pair be I mean whether that these pair or currencies are paid attention a lot by investors that's all when it comes to the trend I would rather trust myself or would actually urge traders to trust and believe themselves of what they see See with their very own eyes in terms of many um, what do you call that time frames and all that so we know that GBP right there GBP USD okay so now what we can then do is to proceed um, to the chart so if I go into the chart right there uh, GBP this is GBP JPY but just before that I would like to also talk a little bit about euro usd first i mean being the first uh, in the list for major pairs the most um, traded ones and the highest liquidity uh, pair is the euro usd so here for example i've expected that i mean before the move went up there and returned uh, i've drawn that some time ago and expected it to to sort of bounce anywhere in within these lines, you know, these red lines right there, uh, these are Fibonacci lines, and then it managed to bounce off from this area here. So um, let's just use a bit of, um, hope you guys can see it clearly. Uh, when I pull my A to B, I see that my C point um, manages to go up to the, uh, to the 50%, okay, the 50% Fibonacci. So I can then um, fill up this one here and put that as 50 percent fips okay that is 50 percent of a to b so what i can then do is draw that b to c now right there so now we're expi we're, we're wondering how far uh, i mean for those who have actually entered that'll be that, that's great because you guys probably already in the winning uh, at the moment i mean on the uh, green for it so uh, here, for example, if AB equals CD um, and C being 50%, you can see that you've got just a little bit more room, and this is on the one hour chart. So we're looking into uh, Euro, perhaps uh, Euro USD uh, reaching the 1.1980. Now, 1980 is right on the dot of the psychological number. So for those of you guys still remember psychological numbers, it's best for us never to take profit or enter uh, at any on the dot or within 10 pips or so of the psychological numbers. And the psychological numbers are based on the last two digits, 00, 0 20, 50, 50, and 80. So this is now 80. Um, and uh, what you want to do is that if, if at all you have already, uh, let's say the opportunity was to sell, uh, and if we cross this one out like that, then we have got a cross section here that is called a centroid. So that would probably be the area that I would be I would have sold. So I have sold at the 12097 area, but uh, I've taken it a, a, a safer approach by tweaking it to psychological numbers. So I um, have actually entered a sell earlier at 12070 because 80 is your psychological. So 2070 okay so 2070 would be the price that I have sold and that would be where I've sold 2070 and not at 2097 just too close to uh, 2100 as well as 2080 so I wanted that to be a safer approach in terms of price so I have sold at 2070 now uh, this is marked at let me just put that a little bit yes okay so 1980 is my price that was given to me but i need to tweak that so um before reaching 1980 so i would i would have exited at 19 uh, 1990 okay so let me just adjust that 1990 let's just put that there there we go so this is just to give you guys a little bit of a warning that uh, you know if, if at all you're entering um, it's it's good to look at that area right there now uh, the D the, that's the expected D area for the euro USD as of now on the one hour chart of course you know there's just more and more selling opportunity for euro USD but we want to plan that trade properly so I'll teach you in a bit to show you or guide you in looking to the left and then how are you going to be entering the next ones that the next selling opportunity for the euro USD based on one hour four hour daily or even shorter term okay so uh, we need to look at the big picture for that but now we're just looking at this here uh, we have got D projected right there now because 
the C point was at 50% Fibonacci ratio. So what that actually gives us is a projection of 200% when we pick the when we pull the B to C. So if I pull the B to C, then I'm looking at 200%, and that's just there down there, uh, and that's just very close to the two green lines we've projected earlier on. Okay, so then we take that one away. Let's just okay, take that away. Right, so we've got uh, three lines right there, and uh, these three lines you can then uh, do it, I mean, shade it up as a reversal zone. So that basically means that if you are selling already selling your Euro USD, then you want to exit before price reaches that blue zone. That blue zone is called a reversal, potential reversal zone, or in short, PRZ. Okay, so this is what we're going to look at Euro USD because I see that there's a lot of opportunities for a sell. Uh, I've got lots of experts, you know, putting a sell on there, um, but their price levels sh sh sort of uh, mirrors mine, and I see that uh, you know there's just lots of opportunities on the sell um, based on different time frames as well. Okay, so uh, let's go on with Euro USD still, but I just want to lay out what can you actually ex expect uh, for the upcoming days. Or weeks. So if I go on there, I've just got this very simple sort of uh, um, geometric pattern that I, I use. Uh, I'm experimenting at the moment, just um, doing trades based on these geometric shapes, and they are based on certain rules that I have for myself. And uh, what I see is that if we had that opportunities to sell all the way from there, that center point of that square right down to this. So what I see may actually be a potential is to copy uh, what i've done is the first square right there the first rectangular rectangle uh there i've just copied that to there and now what i can actually do is to um let me just see what i can do that is to um draw another rectangle but it's more like a copy paste so i'll just uh, show you what i'm doing uh, if i take that perhaps draw that on top uh, just the same sort of uh, length, you know, all the way from that. I'm just focusing on that rectangle at the moment um, because of, I'm experimenting on price action within that um, rectangle as well, just to keep it uh, really simple uh, in my head, basically. So um, if I do that, oops, sorry about that. And I'm just copying basically now another a third uh, a third rectangle um, mainly because the trend is expected to be really strong to the downside for Euro USD. So hence the reason I see that this could potentially happen. Uh, so now as you can see, I'm just copying that right, and uh, I'll attach that last line right here as well. Okay, all the way here, right? Simple, and then um, but. You know, I'll cover that all in the membership area as well. How did I draw these squares? What are the theory behind it? You know, they're actually quite simple, but they're taking into account price action. Uh, how did I actually begin um, that rectangle is just through that price right there, how it has respected it. And it starts with a triangle and then a square. And then I copy all these squares or rectangle. That's basically it. And uh, I see that happening for quite a number of years already. And I'm just in the final touches of um, of producing setups with it so that I can share that uh, into my uh, to my members in the effectometry.com website as well as FP markets um, uh, what do you call that traders as well okay so here for example um, I'll just do that in yellow just to mirror what I've drawn all right so uh, we've got the next sort of fall uh, potentially could be as low as 174 area i mean of course you know this this we are looking at the four hour chart and we're looking at that's like 300 plus pick but of course we want to look at that that's definitely a possibility uh, but we want to um, you know, um, be aware that it's never a straight drop, you know, it's always a, going to be a zigzag, zigzag drop. So if at all it's actually going to be falling right down, you would need to look into a significant um, uh, support area to the left. I mean, if we look to the left, for example, there's a challenge. Um, you would be challenged, for example, let's just do that. See, as price go lower, you have got that area right there as your potential support in the past. So um, I would then mark, you know, these areas here is opening price area. Um, let's just change the thickness of that so we don't get confused. I will put that as green, uh, 
line green just to indicate a potential support area, support zone could actually start from that opening huge candle right there uh, going up as well as its lowest week right there but also the lowest area that it has actually gone up there and also a little bit on there okay so i want to watch out on that area uh these these uh, green area when i actually start selling let's say if i start selling now or um, maybe perhaps me i would take um, into consideration in selling again euro usd once it reaches 2010 so that's um that's under the 2020 psychological number so under 2020 minus 10 it's 2010 so i would then um, give you that trade idea whereby it's another potential selling opportunity at 2010 and then looking at take, taking your profit at 1960 okay taking profit at 1960 that means 1 1.1960 because that where it was marked here um that support line at the very top uh, would be at 1945. So 1945, as you go up, as closest to 50. So if you want to sell, you need to take profit before prices uh, reaches that 1960, 1950 area. So 10 pips above 1950 is 1960. So you want to take profit there. So I would think it's uh, quite a, a nice one uh, to, to take. So you can do that as a pending order as well. And if you look at 2010, let's say, let's say 2010. 2010 right down to 1960 as mentioned 1960 that's about 50 pips or so so that's not too bad um, but that's based on the four hour chart right there um, but what you want to do as well is uh, for those traders who would like to you know take it uh, with, with smaller pips or have got smaller um, equity you can always look into whether or not you have got a bearish ABCD pattern in the lower time frame like 15 minutes 30 minutes uh, or one hour so you can actually match up 15 minutes 30 minutes and one hour and look at whether or not you have got strong downtrend on these time frames and that actually means whether or not your candles are under all three uh, lines whether all the three EMAs are pointing downwards like how it's pointing downwards now and it's quite good on the on the four hour on the daily as well uh, on the daily, not as good, sorry about that. Uh, on the daily, it's just entering uncertainty zone, but that actually gives us a little bit of a hint as well. What that gives us a hint of is that um, as it comes down on the daily chart, it may actually hit that um, area right there, which is the um, dark blue line of 200 EMA. And that uh, 200 EMA is right at the 1970 for area you see so this is where we can then plan uh, because you see that that's where that strong support have actually happened uh, and this we wanted to take at 1960 so that is at 1970 you can actually take that risk but it's just you know you could either choose to take profit at 1990 okay but the thing is that it's uh, not going to give you as much pips but perhaps a little safer but if you're willing to take that risk as well you know because uh, there is no uh, there's no saying on whether it will definitely find uh, what you call that uh, support at within that green area or find support exactly or close to the 200 EMA. So this is basically it. Um, but what it can actually do is still come down to that area where it found support before and then leave a, sort of a wick, you know, so the wick will touch uh, maybe, you know, my guess, and then the, the, the body would actually rise up. Uh, so the wick may just want to touch and test this area here, but then the body may actually start uh, to stop or opening. Uh, new candles um, at the 200 EMA instead. So that could actually be a possibility, but uh, there's just too much fundamental on selling. Uh, all these shocks that are happening in the Eurozone at the moment are not really advertised uh, or actually broadcasted in news a lot. Um, and you look at that on newspaper in the Europe zone and all that, it's all talking about all the prices and everything else, uh, but it's not really seen so much on the 
on, on, on Bloomberg, CNN, CNBC, you know, so, um, but it's showing that uh, it is actually having more dominant uh, bears and sellers at the moment. So that's your sort of uh, opportunity for the Euro USD. And also, I would guess it'd probably be best to look into correlated pairs with the Euro USD. So, uh, hence the reason there's lots of um, opportunity in buying the USD and then selling the Euro. And you want to look into USD, JPY, um, what do you call that? Um, correlated pairs as well okay so that's on euro usd uh, earlier on we've looked into gbp being the center point center of focus okay uh, among traders and investors so we want to look into gbp usd as well so if the usd is on the upside then gbp is again confirmed to be on the downside right so uh, we want to uh, again uh, not confirm that way but confirm with our eyes only Okay, so let's just look at that's GBP USD. Um, I'll just insert a new chart right there for GBP USD. Okay, and uh, insert the template, load the uh, indicators, especially the 50, the 100, and the 200 exponential moving average right there. Okay. There we go. So now let's just start a little bit of um, trend analysis, we call it, yeah? Um, I like using the ADX as well, the Average Directional Movement Index. What that is, is uh, it's simply found here, insert. Uh, you go to Indicators, and you can find it here, Average Directional Movement Index, or you can actually look at under Trend, Average Directional Movement Index, and in short, it's ADX. What that does is that uh, when you look at a particular trend, whether it's an uptrend or a downtrend, if this blue line here is above the number 30 or 25, above 25 usually, but I've got 30 here, but if, as soon as it's above 25, it's telling you that that trend that you're looking at, whether it's downtrend or uptrend, um, is above 25. So if it's above 25 and it's a downtrend, that means that downtrend is quite strong. So what you can actually do is to compare, let me just move this down a little bit, so here, for example, we're on the GBP USD one hour chart and we can see that, you know, candles are under all three lines. Three lines are looking quite good, pointing downwards, not touching each other. You know, it's, it's giving you that flow to the downside. Uh, prices, uh, price is at 1.3664 at the moment. Um, so the last two digit at 65, I would prefer for prices to fall under the 50 to give me more power to the downside. Okay, so as we go into the four hour chart, we want to look at whether or not the four hour chart as of now matches with the one hour chart in terms of the trend. So in terms of candles, you need to match two things when you have your uh, three lines on the chart. You need to match your candles, which are candles under or above all the three lines. So in this case, uh, let's say it's hinting us a downtrend. We've gone onto the table, the top 10 and all that, and it's downtrend for the GBP USD. And then we want to confirm whether that downtrend is strong enough or not. Now, um, on the one hour chart, we've got a very, very strong uh, sort of um, up, uh, sorry, downtrend for the GBP USD, mainly because of the ADX as well. It's just pointing upwards and it's gone really, really far away and it's gone above the 25 and way, way above. So the, on the one hour chart, it's strong. On the four hour chart, we've got a little bit of slowdown, okay? Uh, mainly because we've got a candle still pointing downwards. You still have the candles um, showing you a downtrend, but then you have got a little bit of a mismatch with the three lines, the three MA. The three MA lines has got a bit of a, um, how do you call that, entanglement. They are entangled between the 100 and the 200 exponential moving average. And we want a clear, smooth three lines pointing down without touching each other. And that's not happening on the four hour chart. And coincidentally, on the power of the trend, the strength of the trend itself, the ADX is showing the, um, the, the blue line, the blue lines under 30. But uh, perhaps it's just above 25. Let's just check. Uh, it's at 24, it's not even 25 as yet, and that line has not gone above the third. I usually use the 30 as my indicator. Uh, we can always use uh, 25, uh, the level 25. So uh, here you can see that it's it's low in terms of its uh, trend's strength. So the downtrend is not that strong at the moment, but that is coincidentally, um, you know, matching with the three lines. The three lines is not, it's giving you the idea that yes, it's a downtrend, 
but perhaps the marathon is not going to go on that long uh, for now. Maybe a correction is coming up. Uh, overall, maybe downtrend, but that can actually be confirmed by looking at your daily chart. Now, your daily chart right there is also coincidentally telling you that there may be a reversal quite soon, and that is mainly because of the 200 exponential moving average right there. So you've got the strong candles. Of course, it's, it's really dominated by a lot of sellers. Sellers will come down and come down and bring the price down. Um, but the thing about it is that it's got this area here of the 200 exponential moving average. So it might find support and then go up. Maybe it's a correction and then come lower. But then it's a bit too early to decide on the daily chart. Uh, I just want to see what's hap what would actually happen. So hence the reason it's probably best for you to wait until price um, reaches the 50, the 36.50 area and go under the 50. Okay, so under the 50, let's say 36, 40 and below, then you can see uh, maybe um, um, a pattern would actually emerge and then to trade it from that price onwards at 36, 40. So 36, 40 would be a better uh, selling price as opposed to uh, the price now. Okay, the price now is just a little bit too expensive, too high uh, a price uh, at this moment of time. Okay. Uh, of course, you know, uh, we think about buying and uh, buying uh, low and selling high. In this case here, we are looking into the right price to actually sell because we're expecting it to, uh, to go further down. So the price that we sell is still going to be a higher price. Okay, so there we go. We've got that. And if we uh, look into four hour a little bit and just sort of, uh, you know, um, browse through, glance through uh, to the left. And you've got that price now at 36.64. As we go on a little bit to the left, uh, we just want to look at whether or not we've got any significant support, significant resistance that we need to pay attention to, you know, uh, that really catches our eye, for example. So we just don't want to miss that. So it looks like it's quite clear on that, but we have got this area here. Maybe we want to just focus on that just in case. Uh, so what that means is that th this area here um, poses as a significant area of resistance as well. So here, for example, highest sort of candle in this whole family of candles here, highest candle right there and highest wick right there. So we've got that resistant area right there marked. So uh, we always want to mark any um, significant resistance or um, support. Okay. Um, but of course, if you're a seller, you want to look at, uh, you want to focus at, at support, but we didn't find that, but we have got a significant, um, what do you call that, resistant area. And this resistant area could easily be support as well, but we want to mark that so we are aware that uh, anything could actually happen here. It could actually come up with a very long candle uh, coming through and pierces through that, giving you the hint that it's got a lot of power to sell, or it might find a bit of support to come up first and spring down even even more powerfully. So either either scenario could actually happen at this moment of time, but uh, it's probably best for us to wait. And um, I would uh, then look at you know if it's got more power for selling the GBP versus the dollar. It does actually depend on how strong the dollar is at this stage. We have got a very uh, weak. Uh, uh, Euro uh, driven by loads of, uh, as I've mentioned, catalyst fundamentals, economics, and various others. Uh, so that is just giving lots more power for the USD. USD is talking about interest rate hikes and various other things, um, and a lot of cover ups as well. Uh, so they want to cover up uh, a lot of things and want to make things positive. So that could actually be another driven factor. So if that is that would be according to plan of what they would do, then the GBP would have much more room to the downside. Okay, so there you go. So I want to look at that and uh, maybe uh, also look into lower time frame and see whether or not we have got hints or patterns or anything that we can actually look at for the shortest term um, in respect to that zone right there as well. Um, as you can see, you've got all that area right there just has stopped. Um, all the price and all the buyers have actually just stopped, went sideways, and then boom, it came down. So that, that sideway move is just giving us lots of hints of a big drop. And that drop did actually occur, and now it's just moving away and under all three lines as well in the 15 minutes chart. So just giving us more and more hint of a downside because the story builds up from shorter time frame, giving you more and more price fall under the, the, the lines, and then you've got 
the, the candles moving, you know, lower and lower under the lines as well. So this is just giving us more and more hints to the downside for the GBP USD. It's just the, it's just a matter of time and price. So we need time to bring prices lower, and when the time is right, then the price would actually be right as well uh, to be under the psychological level, and only then we see a better uh, sort of more solid sellers coming into the, the picture and then we can also be traders right along that wave okay to the downside but now it's just a little bit too early but we can always look into what would drive the market from tomorrow onwards it's just a global public holiday today may day and uh, that's basically giving uh, you know a, a lot of room for tomorrow's action i would uh, think okay all right, there you go. So, uh, yes, any questions at all, guys? Anything about any uh, pairs that you would wish to look at or anything that's not really clear of what I've just mentioned about Euro USD and GBP USD? Anything else, guys? Would you guys like to take a look at other pairs? USD JPY, perhaps? USD JPY is just, uh, you know, moving to the upside. Uh, strongly um, I've got a, a geometric trade idea here and um, for GBP JPY but that was an earlier sell of 15010 I was aiming at uh, 14960 and I think we're really really close to it but not yet hit the take profit hasn't actually hit take profit now price is really I think it's 14970 ish if I'm not mistaken uh, so I'm just waiting for another 10 pips down for it to hit the take profit of 14960. Uh, it has actually gone really well, um, so I'm just 10 pips away. I might actually just close the trade or uh, just leave it until it hits there. Um, and that's basically the decision that we as traders have to make, you know, to uh, uh, take your profit early or you would like to leave that and uh, test your risk appetite. Okay, so that's that's the two decisions that you need to make yourself as a trader. All right, so geometric trade idea right there. Um, also, uh, we've got further fall expected for GBP, JPY as well. Uh, and I'm um, just looking at another uh, idea at selling at 15010. So it has already triggered that price and taking profit further down at 14830. So uh, that is actually quite a fall. Um, 150, let's say 150150. 15010, let's say, yeah, all the way down to 14830. Uh, so that's um, that's more or less 180 uh, tight pips uh, that's expected for the fall. Uh, so it's just that it's it's just giving us lots of hints to the downside and uh, drawn that uh, uh, shapes right there. Uh, the other thing as well is we just have got that Z-like pattern that's moving. Uh, it's not a, a very high probability type Z pattern, but just looking at price action itself, support resistant areas, uh, we just want to be aware of uh, areas of support as well as resistant. Looking left, you know, uh, you have got that significant area to watch out for uh, that is here as well as lowest candle, lowest wick right there. Okay, so we've got that area to watch out for, uh, which is very close to where it is. Uh, it's marked at between 149.55 to 149.40 area. So I can uh, safely say that it's really close to the 149.50s psychological number. So you are at 149.78 now. Um, perhaps you want to look into... Uh, you know, uh, exiting just before it reaches the 14950s uh, psychological level because that's uh, most probably an area that uh, um, the price could uh, bounce up, you know, or a correction could actually be due at that area. Okay, so 14960 would probably be a good ideal area. If you're already selling, then you want to be looking into exiting at 14960 if you can, and then uh, perhaps look into selling again at 14910. So 14910, which is, you know, this is where, um, or, or 14940. So 14940, you could look at reselling again. That could be a good price for a pending order. Uh, if you want to be more conservative, then you want to look into selling at 14910. So it's got two uh, selling price on pending order that you could do. Uh, firstly, it's 149, um, 14940. The other one is 14910. Okay, 
so that's basically your selling price you're taking profit at 14830 so 14830 is uh, an area you could also take profit 14810 but i just thought you know looking at all the areas of support and all that previously 14830 would probably be a little bit more ideal uh, and this is on the four hour chart so you're looking into waiting a little bit a couple of days to about a week or so before you look at it uh, potentially uh, to reach that take profit but this is in general you know um, but uh, it does actually depend on the volatility of the market uh, if you've got loads of catalyst a lot of things that are moving the market you can e even easily get that take profit hit in a day or even a couple of hours depends on how volatile and how big the uh, movements uh, are okay all right there guys any other questions you guys are quite quiet today any questions anything that's uh, in doubt uh, not very sure or you want to share um, traits of yours and we can discuss it anything anything at all gbp jpy um we've got the euro gbp at this stage as well uh looking into buying at uh, 88.10 taking profit at 88 uh, 40 uh, that was a bit of a fall there so I was floating a bit and then now it's continuing uh, so buying at 8810 uh, which is above that area right there um, it got I think it got triggered if I'm not mistaken let me just check 8820 yeah it got triggered so I'm floating at the moment for that but we're expecting a bit of a you know 30 pips sort of rise uh, from the 8810 onwards so if it does actually pierce through that uh, it's got a bigger likelihood uh, of going up to the 8840 area actually 8850 but then you want to take profit before the 8850 which is a psychological level to exit okay guys now it's your turn any questions at all anything that you want to share anything you want to ask please feel free We've got the next uh, seven, eight minutes or so, so we can cover these questions before we end the session for today. Any questions at all, guys? Right, we want to plan up for tomorrow. Uh, just loads of trading opportunities actually this week, just loads of things to share. So I'll be sharing more uh, through the Telegram as well and uh, be active. I'll be sorting out the um, NAMI, uh, the chatbot as well. And uh, hopefully I'll announce that on Telegram that it's all sorted out so that you guys can then uh, look at my trades, my own trades and copy them uh, as well as ask me on Telegram and we can then share uh, opinions and trades together okay no questions at all all right um, a little bit on gold perhaps um, gold is just uh, I mean based on the USD's expectation for an upside move um, it's just showing more downside move for gold at the moment it's trading under the three lines but um, not really clear on the trend on the four-hour chart uh, but it's clearer on the one hour chart with a downward type movement um, on the four hour chart it's just not that clear but uh, we're really really close to a significant support area right there um, as well as that one there and that actually coincidentally on that one there so you can also take into consideration that longest week right there okay so um, but as of now to actually look into the area of that okay, that area right there and if it does actually proceed lower than that area lower than, than the 1306.82 uh, area for gold versus the dollar then uh, it might actually then fall a little bit more and if it does then it will find its support at the, the 1302.78 area as well so we just got that area right there but three lines the three and um, horizontal line give you an idea of a potential support area uh, so now it's just bang on that area that that week of the current candle just stopped at the 1306 area which is exactly at where prices have actually gone up or opened its price to the upside previous and you know some time ago so uh, this is the reason why we want to always look to the left just to be careful and understand your position as a trader so now if you're a seller then you know that you might be overtaken by some buyers uh, buyers at this uh, area of zone so you just want to wait till prices go above the 1309 and above perhaps 1309.60 or so i know i don't use the psychological numbers a lot with gold but this is basically it okay guys 
All right then. Okay, hope that's been uh, clear and uh, useful information for you guys. Um, no questions though so far from you guys. So I just would like to check one more last time. Any questions at all from you guys? Anything that you guys are not really clear of? Uh, we'll be happy to share. No questions at all? Yeah, giving you guys some, probably a couple of seconds. And, uh, if not, then we will end this session today. Let's just look into a couple of others. Uh, we had uh, several good uh, trades last week. Um, quite a number of trades have actually hit its take profit area. And USDCHF has also hit its take profit right there at the very end of the D area. Uh, let's just see. Okay, we've got all these ones here, but we've got more to share as we go on. Um, Okay, that's USDJPY right there. Probably get rid of all this, just give me a second. I uh, just want to take a last uh, look through the USDJPY for this stage. Just give me a second, just clearing up all the lines. So I'm scratch. Okay. Just would like to look at a bigger sort of angle, whether or not we could expect any uh, sort of uh, movement to the upside. We've probably got a, a potential, you know, of a Z-like pattern, but it's not a very nice one right here. But uh, if I measure that A to B right there, slanting wise, it would actually point us up to this area right here. So that could be an expected area for the USD JPY, um, if at all we're following that this. Um, Z-like pattern right here, so we're expecting that to sort of do that kind of move, okay? Um, and that would then reverse at that area there, giving a fall to the 50% area, and then rise up again. Um, but that's uh, basically a possible area to consider. Um, but if we take that away and sort of focus. Uh, on an ABCD instead, uh, we might be able to find a sort of coincidence of where the D point could actually reach uh, there. So if I do that or that, it's just not good enough, uh, mainly because what we can actually do is to, to draw an ABCD, but uh, perhaps not from that fall, only because if we take the A from there, and bring it right up here. We've got it at a minimum of 38.2, but if we take that a little bit high there, if that's your B, then your C could be down here, which actually is not a minimum of 38.2. So it's not a good area to uh, sort of draw your ABCD pattern. It's not, it's not good for an ABCD pattern, but it's probably better for a Z-like uh, pattern. Uh, but then as we draw that one there, uh, we can see that, uh, you know, as it rises up, we have got some uh, area that we can draw following a resistance zone right here. So we've got the area to watch out for at 111.00. Triple one zero zero would be an area to watch out for due to a significant resistance area. So you want to uh, exit at 110.90 at least if you're buying your USD JPY. Okay, guys, I think that's uh, all I have for you guys um, today. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, if you've got any further questions, you know, kindly email FP Markets, info at uh, FP Markets or support at FP Markets. You can also email me directly at Kenny at fxgeometry.com. If you've got any questions, feel free to communicate with me via Telegram uh, directly or in within the group, the GTI group that I have. Okay, so if you guys are not already members uh, of the GTI Telegram community, you can always go on to fxgeometry.com and feel free to click on to the telegram group uh, on the right panel of the website and join the community there okay um, for any more information about webinars uh, by fp markets you know feel free to uh, email me directly as well as fp markets themselves uh, but we're planning uh, more webinars to come to guide you guys on live markets as well as courses that are coming uh, through very very soon uh, sponsored by fpmarkets.com 
Okay, so any information as well regarding FP Markets uh, MT4 platform spreads, um, feel free to contact FP Markets uh, because you know they've they've got one of the most attractive sort of uh, features and product services as well. Uh, ten thousand plus instruments that are really rare to find in a broker. You've got ten thousand, ten thousand, not a hundred, not hundreds, but ten thousand instruments to trade in. Uh, the FP Markets platform. So they've got two platforms. One is the normal MT4, but the other is made customized for themselves to cater to uh, stock traders as well as equities as well. So feel free, if you've got any questions, if you're a stock trader equities as well, uh, feel free to try them out as a platform. Uh, it's quite a solid type platform uh, with good people and uh, leaders behind the company. So uh, uh, feel free to, to contact them for any information regarding um, FP markets products and services okay guys I think uh, I'm going to um, exit this session at the moment and would like to thank you guys uh, for for attending this webinar and appreciate your time in attending the webinar uh, if there's any questions like I've mentioned go on to telegram or contact me on email uh, or various other ways that you have and uh, feel free to uh, ask okay all right guys have a very good evening uh, take care and see you guys soon in the next webinar bye bye